Question came from Marissa, longtime friend of the program. We love Marissa. She said, with Jackson Dart now officially with Ole Miss, which is true, we're going to talk about it in a second, what are your thoughts on what the offense will look like in 2022? Can't overstate how huge this is. You can't overstate how all in, over the cliff, if you will, Lane Kiffin and that coaching staff became on landing Jackson Dart. And to their credit, they got it done. As you heard us talk about for the majority of last week, Chris Hummer at 24-7 Sports, our Chris Hummer, was reporting that that was getting closer and closer and closer. And it really felt like that was where the smart money was for about the last two weeks. So now that we have it official, and it is official, Jackson Dart is an Ole Miss Rebel. Michael Trigg, the tight end, also, as expected, follows him to Ole Miss. Now we can talk about what kind of impact it has on Ole Miss and what kind of impact it has overall in the SEC West, because keep in mind what we have in the SEC West. This is like, uh, this is the deep end of the deep end of the pool. Over at the YMCA, they have like a three foot, but then they have a nine foot, but then they have a 15 foot. And you think when you're in the nine foot section, that's the deep end. Mm -mm. It's like the midsection. There's a deeper end. This is the 15 foot pool in college football, the SEC West right now. And Lane Kiffin is watching a ton walk out the door. He's watching Matt Corral walk out the door. He's watching coaches walk out the door. And now he brings in the key piece. I would argue even above and beyond the coaching replacements, the key piece at quarterback in Jackson Dart. When I say key, I mean what they're going to need to try and replicate what they just did. We had them in the JP poll, our own internal power ratings. We had them in the top 10, a vast majority of the year. This was one of the more undersung stories in college football last year, only because they lost to Bama early. And so people realized they're going to need Bama to lose twice if they're going to go to Atlanta. Otherwise, they're probably going to get boxed out. But that should not deter you from acknowledging what they did. At least it didn't on this show. But then a lot of that moves on. So, so you know as well as I do, because I, I fielded a lot of DMs and emails from you guys. A lot of you thought, one hit wonder. Let's see what Kiffin does without fill in the blank. Matt Corral. Uh, let's see what he does without those coordinators. Let's see what he does without this and without that. That's what they're going to play the games for this fall. But Marissa just asked, what will the offense look like? I have a lot less doubt, a lot less trepidation about what that offense is going to look like now that they've got those key pieces in there. Because keep in mind, guys, there, this is no promise, but keep in mind, the transfer portal is not closed. It's not over. You're going to have a little moratorium, which is starting about right now. And then we'll have spring practice. But then that thing's going to open back up. And now... Unlike this previous window, if you will, when the transfer portal opens back up and you see a lot more movement, those wide receivers or running backs or offensive linemen, whatever the case may be, that go into the portal after spring, they're going to go in there knowing that Lane Kiffin has a quarterback that he can win with again at Ole Miss, which makes that an infinitely more attractive destination. So you never know. The roster situations are always fluid. You never know how many more they can take or they want to take or they're looking to take. But Marissa, to answer your question, it's nothing but good news for Ole Miss. And then as it relates to the SEC West picture, it just reinforces the point that we've made so many times here. There are not enough wins to go around. Simple mathematics. I don't care if every one of these programs are operating at as high a level as you expect them to. Someone is going to be a four-loss team that's really good. Arkansas this past year is a perfect example of what can happen in the SEC. Arkansas finished nine and four. Arkansas was one of the better teams in the country, just wire to wire. If I were to take Arkansas and give them Boston College's schedule or Cincinnati's schedule, they would have been a player really, really late in the year. They would have been in the playoff conversation really late in the year. But because they play in the SEC, they, think about this. They won nine games and they played both participants in the national championship game in Georgia and Alabama. Every year you got to play A&M. Now they beat them, hats off, but you got to do it every year. You got to play LSU and Auburn every year. It's tough. It's a meat grinder. And if you don't have it at quarterback, you do not upset your way to the SEC championship game. You do not do it, you know, on the back of high turnover margin, like Iowa was trying to do in the Big Ten this past year. You may do it for a month. You may do it for three weeks. You're not going to do that for seven or eight games. You're just not. And so you've got to have it at quarterback. That's what you have to have to have a fighting chance. And so Ole Miss, at the very least, they give themselves a fighting chance. That's exciting to watch, though. Now let's see what the ripple effect is.